Let the church say amen. 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 He said, don't worry about tomorrow. <laughs> don't worry about tomorrow. That's what he said, amen. When you get to tomorrow, he said, hey, no need to worry. <laughs> but that night is going to pray. Because it'll be all Lord, I'm free, yes, yes, God. 
right here. Who y'all with right here? Miss Williams, are they with you? Who's saying that? She didn't hear me when I said that. Get the picture back. All right, thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you for your job for What a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord. Once again, would y'all agree? Did yeah. y'all have a great week this week? Yeah. I had a great spring break myself with my family, with my boys, my grandsons. The old wifey, wifey. We had a great time. We were in Branson, camping out. I had just a great time in fellowship. Went to see the Jesus play. So much fun. What if I'd known having grandkids would be this fun? I'd have that first thing. <laughs> and that little bit when he's, he's so bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> he is hard. He's like, Baba! Papa, he said like nobody else can say, Papa. <laughs> He's something else too. And I love him too, but she got his fault. She can't get out of the sight without him crying. Hallelujah, praise God. Well, a few announcements. Listen, our FCC Girl Scout troop is coming. And I want all my parents that have girls ages K through 12 that are interested to get them signed up in the back for our very own FCC Girl Scout troop. <laughs> Let me thank FCC for how you guys are responding in compassion and prayer. We have this thing going on with all of our members are just engaging with each other in prayer as we're going through things. And I want to just thank all of you all so much for your prayer and your compassion. Next announcement, the cafe will be reopened next Sunday, the first Sunday in April. You can get your sandwich next Sunday. Amen. And your coffee. All right, first fruit will, will be until May, the first Sunday in May, so we're still uh, asking that you continue to give sacrificially to our first fruit effort. And we're still waiting on God concerning our own main campus. Not just the building, but the campus. Y'all are going to shout. And it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And God always does things great. And I'm excited about it. Well, let's prepare our hearts to give now. Let's all stand and be prepared to give. How many of you are excited about giving like I am? My wife and I have pledged our personal giving and we've been giving over the course of this time frame. And that's where we give our tithes and we give our offerings and result, God is blessing us. Let's hold our offering as high as we want God to take us. And let's recite our confession of faith together now as an act of faith, love, and a heart for the house. We bring our tithe and offering from our house and release it into yours. Because I am a tither, the devour is a view over my life. As I give today, I believe that according to your word, grace abounds in every area of my life. Health and healing, jobs and better jobs. Bills paid off, gifts and surprises, and unexpected blessings are coming my way. Thank you, God, for watching over your word to perform it. In my life, my family, and with my money, you have blessed me to be a blessing, and I have more than enough to give so that your vision and purpose may be fulfilled. Amen. Remain standing, turn to the right of the section that you're seated in. And I want you to give you instruction when to be a let the people of God give. Just want to praise you forever and ever. 
And no matter what we're going through, God, that you are still on the throne, you are still in control, God. And we just thank you, God, that we are under the umbrella of your love, God. And we are covered in your blood. That washes us white as snow. Amen. Every song I'm saying when we pray. It is me. It's me.
call me tomorrow. Call me tomorrow. I'm serious. But the number that when I say call me tomorrow, I mean that. Oh my God. Y'all stand on your feet. Let's receive the word. We in a season of sacrifice. God, I'm trying to preach, but y'all just going to leave me alone today.
obey God this morning. And I want to give you a word that is sure to bring you into spiritual success in this season of sacrifice. First Samuel chapter 15, verses 2 through verse 22. My help is going to read for me. So y'all either look at the screen or read your Bible. Read it. Thus said the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek, and utterly destroy all that they have, and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. And Saul gathered the people together and numbered them into lane, 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to a city of Amalek and laid way in the valley. And Saul said unto the Kenites, Go, depart, get you down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For ye showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. Keep reading. And, and, Saul, he, and, and Saul, Saul smote the Amalek, Amalekites from Havilah until thou comest to Shur that is over against Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and the oxen and the fatlings and the lambs and all that was good would not utterly destroy them, but everything that was vowed and refused, that they destroyed utterly. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he has turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place, and is gone about, and passed on, and gone down to Gilgal. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel said, What meaneth then that this bleeding of the sheep is in my ears, and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Say, say, and I will tell thee what the Lord has said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, wast thou not made in the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king over Israel? And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore, then didst thou not they obey the voice of the Lord, but this fly upon the soil, and this evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took the spoil, sheep, and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, that's what you're preach about. Obedience, Obedience is better than sacrifice. Better than sacrifice. Anybody may be seated. Obedience is better than sacrifice. It really doesn't matter how much we give. It doesn't matter how much we worship when we come to the church. But what matters most to God, far above anything else, than our sacrifice is our obedience. Some like Saul in our text try to replace obedience with sacrifice, but sacrifice will never be able to replace obedience. I don't care how much you shout, I don't care how much you holler, it will never replace your obedience. Obedience by definition is compliance with an order to another's authority. It is our willingness to withdraw from our own will 
and submit to the will of the Lord and the ways of God, I have experienced in my life the experience of supernatural wonders and miracles on the other side of my obedience. If you want to experience more than you can imagine, obey God. Somebody shout, obey God. Obey God. If you want to be blessed in the city and in the field, coming in and going out, obey God. If you want to bless God to bless the fruit of your ground and the fruit of your body, obey God. If you need a miracle in your finances, obey God. If you really want to have church and you're tired of just watching other folk have church, you need to obey God. If you want God to enlarge your territory, you obey God. If you want to see the supernatural in your situation, obey God. Obedience is crucial, crucial for the supernatural experience. While obeying God may seem nonsensical, it's the only thing that leads us to the supernatural. The major financial, relational, situational, and spiritual experiences that I have encountered in life have been the result of obedience. I got here one of the best women that was on this side of earth because I obeyed God. God said, stop living in sin. I can't get no help right there. And I made a choice to obey God. After 22 years of retiring from one church, I went up on the mountain, spent two days. I decided when I came back down that I was going to obey God. And now we have Fellowship Christian Church. Why? Because I obeyed God. Somebody shout, obey God. The buses that we have, we have them because one day I went by patient's house, talked to him, and I decided I was going to obey God. The building that we're going, the campus we're going to get is going to be the result of obeying God. If you all want to experience the supernatural in your life, I have a question. I said, anybody want to experience the supernatural in your life? That was a question. Anybody want to see God do the exceeding, abundantly above all you can even ask for a thing? Well, somebody shout, obey God. Obey God. Don't be like the poor year old little boy that was standing in the hallway of his house. He was crying out of control of it. The mother stopped what she was doing to console him. She asked him, son, what's the matter? He can hardly get the words out. You know how kids are when they cry, mm -hmm. She said, show out. Mm -hmm. She said, what happened? He said, daddy used a bad word. <laughs> she, knowing her husband that, that he didn't use profanity in front of his children or to them, like some of us do. She said, son, what did he say? Dad said, obey. <laughs> For some of us in the church, we become so accustomed to nice words like shout, pray, praise, anointing, prophetic, and blessings that a word like obey has become like a bad word. It's not a bad word, but it's a word that can shift the trajectory of your spiritual life. Our obedience demonstrates our faith and our reliance in God. It is the key to our spiritual success. If you want to watch God do something he's never done before, I dare you to obey God. The account of our text shows us that going through the motion of religious observances that I make up for fully obeying God you can worship all day, you can run, you can shout, you can take out some roles, but nothing really replaces fully obeying God. In this text that we read, Samuel had not anointed Saul to be king of Israel and gave him instruction from God to go down to the Amalek and destroy all that he had. It was God's way of remembering what what had been done in time past. Say, don't you ever worry about your enemy getting away with what he had done for you. 
Because God will not forget it. And God is quick to revenge you for what the devil tried to do to you. And if God doesn't kill them in your face, he'll bless you in front of them. Saul got his men together, went down to Amalek, but instead of destroying everything, verse 8 said, he took Agag, the king, and spared him, and took the best of the sheep, the oxen, the fattens, and the lambs, and all that was good and would not destroy them, but instead decided to sacrifice the animals to God in worship. And according to verse 24, Saul did it because it was what the people suggested. You got to be careful that you don't allow people to talk you out of your obedience to God. Somebody has said that right there. Be careful that you don't let folk talk you out of your obedience because they may talk you out of your miracle. They may talk you out of your breakthrough. You know, stuff like this. Child, God well, would want you to pay your tithes and know your light bills do the only sound. You better obey God. Samuel rebuked Saul for his disobedience against God. Disobedience is rebellion against God as the source of wisdom for our lives. Partial obedience says, I know better, God, I know you know all things, but God, I know better. Someone once wrote, I want to quote on the board, that one of the reasons people find it hard to be obedient to the command of God is because they are not comfortable taking commands and orders from strangers. Through Saul's obedience, our text gives us three points to ponder what is true obedience to God. Number one, obedience to God means we have to adjust our will to his will. Sometimes the, the human will will only go get you so far and do so much, but the will of God requires more of us. God told Saul to destroy it all, everything, even the children, Destroyed all but the will of Saul want to spare some. You got to always remember that doing the will of God means doing it all. Somebody shout all of it. You got to do everything God says, not part of it. Not go only go so far, but you got to say, if God says go 10, you got to go 10 and not 2. The wall of Jericho fell flat because the will of God was for them to walk around it on the seventh day seven times, not two, not four, not five, not even six and a half. God said march around it seven times, and it came down flat when they went around the seventh time. Listen, there are some walls about to come down in your life through your obedience. Tell somebody, obey God. Just like a vehicle sometimes needs a wheel alignment, there are times in our life when you need a wheel alignment and a wheel adjustment. See, if your car is walking in the front, it's because you're, you're, you're off balance. Sometimes our spiritual life needs to be put back in balance. We need to adjust our will, not to what we want, but God is what you want. If it don't look good, if it ain't pretty, if it ain't pleasing, God loves you and it's what you want. Number two, obedience to God means we have to respond beyond the opinions and the affections of those we have relationship with. King Saul allowed the opinions and the affections of those he was in relation with to deter him from following what God demanded. We have to love God more than we love those that we are in love with. Sometimes you got to say, I love you, but I love God more. Kiss him and tell him, I'm still going to do what God says. Shake your hand and say, yeah, brother, I love you. But God said, anybody know anything about God said? The best example of this is Abraham, who 
did not allow his affection for his only son to deter him from the, from the demand of sacrificing him. Son, I love you, but I got to put you on this altar and got ready to kill him. But God said, there's a ram in the bush. And he is who he is today because he obeyed God. Number three, obedience to God means you have to surrender yourself to directions and instructions that sometimes don't make sense. Not all the time but what God tells you to do makes sense. I thought I had a little help right there. Sometimes the stuff that God says do don't make sense. Like, a, like leaving a job when you ain't got a job. See, human sense says don't ever quit a job, he got a job. But when you know that God is the source of your substance, you know that the same God that had me did still got me right now. Who just said that? I'm talking to myself, my God. I hear y'all praise God with it. You have to settle that God is sovereign and that whatever he tells you to do doesn't always have to make sense. But when God is sovereign, that means he's in control of every situation. It may not make sense, but I'm going to do it because it's what God said. Anybody determined to do what, it, what God said, even if it don't make sense. Some folk may call you a fool, but as long as I'm a fool in faith, it may not make sense, but I'm trusting God. I'm trying to show some folk how to trust God when stuff don't make sense in your life. It didn't make sense for Peter to go back out fishing when he had fished all night, but at the word of God, he went back out to go fishing, and the Bible says he caught so many fish that he had to share the fish with other men. It didn't make sense for a widow woman to give Elijah the first of what she had left. It didn't make sense for the blind man to go wash in the pool of Salon. It didn't make sense for Jesus to go to the cross to die for everybody else's sin. It doesn't make sense to give God 10% when the 100% won't even pay the bills. It doesn't make sense to give God the first of your harvest when you need it all. Obedience says, I'm going to release it to God and trust God for the results. Sometimes you just got to release it to God and trust God for the results. Whatever you're going through here today, release it to God and just trust God for the results. I don't care how big it is, how heavy it is, release it to God and trust Him for the results. Look at your neighbor and point at him and say, neighbor, release it and trust God for the results. <laughs> Obedience sometimes says to go ahead on and praise God even before you get the blessing. See, all of us, even a, a sinner can praise God when they get a blessing. But obedience says sometimes you got to praise him in advance. I don't know if there's anybody in here that will obey God enough that everything you've been praying about, everything you've been believing God for, you're willing to praise him in advance. I don't know how he's going to do it, I don't know when he's going to do it. I'm just silly enough to praise him in advance. We got a building coming. I said, we got a building coming. Not just a building, but a campus coming. And I'm just crazy enough to praise him in advance. The bank says you have to have two years worth of finances. Well, all we got is just eight months of good finances, and I'm just silly enough to praise God in advance for what He's getting ready to do.
The bills are already paid. Why? Because we were obedient. And when you are obedient, it will lead you to the supernatural. Anybody believe in God for the supernatural? Well, release what you have and trust God for the results. I'm trusting God for the results. Hallelujah. I'm trusting for the results. Because your obedience is better than your sacrifice. We need to learn how to hear God. Listen, don't call your neighbors. Don't put it on Facebook. Just obey God. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I love you, but I gotta obey God. May not make sense, neighbor, but I gotta obey God. If God tells me to do it, I gotta do it. I don't even know how it's going to work out. But I know if God be for me, he's more than the world against me. I'm just going to obey God. Now, instead of what they're doing, they're obeying God. And when you obey God, God will open the doors and the supernatural will start to happen. He'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings when I have room for them to see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm going to obey God. Hallelujah. No matter what folks say, I'm going to obey God. Hallelujah. It might get me in trouble. It may not be popular. But I'm going to obey God. Because if I obey God, God got my front and God got my back. If I obey God, God will make a way out of no way. I gotta obey God. Somebody shout, obey God. Obey Him, church. Let's obey Him. Are y'all gonna stick with me? If you stick with me, we're going to watch God do supernatural things. And time starts. I said time starts now. Let me just make sure we're right now. Has anybody ever obeyed God and watched God do some crazy things in your life? If I'm talking to you, stand and give him a praise. If you've ever obeyed God, Walk God to the supernatural. Give him a praise right now. Come on, I didn't say give me a praise. I said give God a praise for it. Give God a praise for it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Somebody has been blessed relationally. Somebody has been blessed financially. Somebody has been blessed in a situation because you obey God. Obey God even right now. And we're going to watch God do the exceeding, abundantly, above all we can even ask, think, or imagine. Ever somebody say, neighbor, obey God. Ever on the again say, obey God. You don't need my opinion, just obey God. You don't need their opinion, just obey God. You don't need what they think, just to obey God. Obey him. Obey God. They're obeying God right now. Some are obeying God right now. See, when you expect a harvest, when you obey God with the seed, you can expect God to bring a harvest in your life. Somebody's trying to hold on to the seed. But when the seed is not, when it's not enough to meet your need, it must be a seed for something supernatural in your life. But you gotta obey God. I'm determined I'm gonna obey God. 
walked away from a six-figure job. But I obeyed God. Y'all ain't got it. Y'all should be clapping right there. And I heard God say, came off the mountain and God said, you go and start a ministry where you can have liberty and freedom in worship and in your leadership. I did it. I obeyed God. And guess what? Y'all showed up with me. He told me I would not be by myself. He told me he was sent to go with me. And I decided to obey God. And in the next room of my life, I'm going to obey God in everything that I do in this church. Will you dare three people and say, obey God? I didn't say hug them, I said dap them. Dap three people and tell them, oh my God, that's one, that's two, one more, hit them three, and tell them, oh my God. And if you obey him, he's going to do some supernatural stuff. If you obey him, he's going to open up doors, man cannot shut. If you obey him, God's going to take you to another level. If you obey him, he's going to enlarge your territory. If you obey him, he's going to knock doors down. If you obey him, he's going to make your enemies leave you alone. If you obey him, he's going to give you cities you didn't build and vines you didn't plant. Everybody that's ever obeyed God and saw the results in your life, I want you to go ahead and jump right now. Well, that's a sorry jump. Jump and shout, I obey God. Yes, sir. It didn't even have a front door on it. God, it didn't have a front door on it. A man had been living there had gone into drugs. It had an old car in there, but I obeyed God. It was raining. She's like, no, nah, this ain't our house. When I tried showing, I was taking up the driveway. She was backing up. I said, come on, girl. She backing up and I'm going forward. I said, let's obey God. And guess what? We got that house. And it was a good purchase. It didn't make sense, but we obeyed God. I got so many stories and testimonies of being obedient to God. Walking in faith and reliance in God. And I'm trying to teach the church if you obey Him, God got your front and your back. Y'all grab that mic and sing this song. Heads are bowed, all eyes are closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word today. Thank you that as a minister of now standing here, that you're touching the hearts of people, and some are about to obey you, God. You're telling them to either give their heart to you, or you're telling them to connect with this local church body. And so, God, touch hearts right now. Bring people into obedience to you, God. Do it right now. Your heads are still bowed. If you're hearing God say, go right now. Connect with this church. I want to know when you obey God today. I'm waiting on you right now to obey God. Who be the first to obey God? Even online, obey God. In this church building, obey God. God's waiting on you right now. Would that be one of them? Yes. Would that be one of them? 
Now we want to take it a step further and go into our kingdom, men, and Elijah study for our men and women's groups. Now, there's a couple of options for you to get involved. You can, one, do it with your life group, or you can go through a self-paced option. So maybe you're a little bit busy, the schedule is okay. You can go through this study on your own, but then still find ways to participate in some virtual connections and conversations. The second major thing I want to talk to you about today is our outreach opportunities. There's two weeks this month. First, on April 16th, that's a Saturday at 11 a.m., we're going to be going out to Walmart passing out crosses for Easter. So we would love for you to come out, participate, and join us in the Walmart parking lot. The details are on your screen. Also, we're going to be serving our homeless family, our homeless community, and on Easter, April 17th. You can bring prepackaged sandwiches, you can bring toiletries or water, and we're going to be distributing them out to the homeless. Remember to wear your FCC gear and get ready to spread the love of God. All right, guys, we need you to take advantage of all the ways you can come here at Fellowship this week. So before I sign off, let me get up. That's my church. That's my church. And say this.